If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. We all watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder? How they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange? There were no fighter jets. Did someone give the order not to intercept? If they really scrambled, then why'd they fly so slow? Maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know. And where was our president, George W. That fool? He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. Bushes and Bin Ladens. Now, what's that all about? While all of us were grounded, they flew his family out. Osama got his training from the CIA. Our soldiers took Afghanistan, they let him slip away. A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? Get your views from television news. You'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. And welcome to another episode of Omega Presents. Um, the first thing I want to do off the bat, uh, last show, I, for, I'm just human like the rest of you folks, maybe maybe more fallible, I don't know, but uh, I kept talking about, I was showing all those slides, and I'm going to show some more today, but as I was showing those slides, I kept talking about them being from Stephen Jones' website. No, no, I went to Stephen Jones' website and got directed through a link to Richard Gage's website. And that's uh, sh show camera one here that 
uh, blueprint for 9-11 truth or 9-11 blueprint for destruction on camera one anyway well I guess they're not listening in there but at the end of the show I've said a uh, I said it straight Richard Gage's website is architects and engineers for 9-11 truth dot org or AE 9 truth dot org and Stephen Jones website which it, it was not the source of, of that uh, PowerPoint presentation that I was using um, is stj911.org and uh, at the end on, on the end credits you'll see that so if you didn't get a chance to write it down <clears throat> um, also before we go much further I want to give a shout out to the Supreme Court a Republican dominated Supreme Court voted 5 to 4 two days ago to they, they decided that the, the Constitution really does matter I'll, I'll read this release here. This is from the ACLU, but it talks about what just happened. Uh, New York, in a stunning blow to the Bush administration's failed national security policies, the Supreme Court ruled today, five to four, that the U.S. Constitution applies to the government's detention policies at Guantanamo. The court concluded that detainees held at Guantanamo have the right to challenge their detention through habeas corpus. Yes, restoring habeas corpus. And uh, Stephen R. Shapiro, the legal director of the ACLU, further, further with this comment, today's decision forcefully repudiates the essential lawlessness of the Bush administration's failed Guantanamo policy. It should also mark the beginning and the end, or the beginning of the end of the military commission process which permits the use of coerced evidence and hearsay and thus cannot survive the constitutional, constitutional scrutiny that today's decision demands. It's time to close Guantanamo, end indefinite detention without charge, and restore the rule of law. Right on. What this means is that the Bush administration is on the run now. Everything they've done after 9-11, using 9-11 to justify it, turns out to be illegal. I mean, the Constitution applies wherever U.S. policy is, is used. doesn't matter if it's used overseas. The U.S. Constitution applies to any policy from the United States. So that's one big, real big deal there that a lot of people don't uh, understand. The government has been, you know, under the Bush administration has been criminal. Uh, perhaps later on I'll show you, I have a couple roll-ins with Stephen Kucinich, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, Kucinich, <laughs> I'm getting tongue-tied again. See, it's fallible. Remember, fallible. I'm just like you. If you want to help out, come on down and help me do this right. But uh, <laughs> the, uh, oh, I even forgot where I was on that one. But uh, I'll have, oh, Kucinich. Kucinich was on Monday read 35 counts of impeachment into the congressional record and uh, it took him almost five hours five hours you know I listened to it on C-SPAN and there's I have about 13 minutes of it on a, uh, uh, a roll-in that we could show later if I don't start getting a lot of calls but uh, already the the leadership of the Democrats you know, decided not to do their constitutional duty, which is to impeach when there's crimes involved. That's the duty. That's not an option. That's the duty. It's mentioned six times in the Constitution as the proper remedy for an illegal use of government power. That means that our congressmen are sworn to use that as a remedy. And instead, the democratically controlled Judiciary Committee, uh, well, the, the con they voted to send off this uh, impeachment resolution to the Judiciary Committee, which, of course, will bury it and we'll never see it again. But I don't know, maybe a little optimism. We'll try to bring up some optimism. Uh, in the meantime, I've got a, you know, people say, well, why aren't a lot more people coming out? And, you know, celebrity after celebrity is coming out talking about 9-11 truth um, we have people in the Bush administration coming out talking about 9-11 we have leaders from all over the world 
you know, saying openly in, and writing in books that 9-11 was an inside job. Um, I have a really good roll-in that is a, uh, it's an interview on the Alex Jones radio show um, of uh, Jesse Ventura, ex-governor Jesse Ventura. And um, I guess we'll just go ahead and roll that in, but that'll give you a good idea of, you know, his mindset. And uh, we'll talk about that when we, when we come back from the roll-in. Well, we've got to have him back sometime in the near future. Just an amazing interview with former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura, Hollywood movie star, wrestling champion, best-selling author, uh, surfer. <laughs> and it's great getting to meet him in person when he was with Kinky Friedman. And uh, we've had Willie Nelson called up a month or two ago and said, hey, I want to come on your show and talk about 9-11 being an inside job. And he came on and talked about it. Governor Ventura, what is the establishment going to do as the one of the most respected living Italian presidents, former head of their intelligence, went public and said 9-11 was carried out by criminal elements of the government? Uh, what are what are people going to do as we see more and more and more and more uh, former CIA section chiefs? Uh, we have just hundreds of engineers, physicists. Uh, We've got Bob Bear that the movie Syriana is about, a famous SEAL commander, saying all the evidence points at Inside Job. Uh, we have underwriting laboratories. Kevin Ryan, they did internal tests and, and said it was impossible with Building 7. What are they going to do as the laws of physics come out here? Well, they're going to continue to deny it. Uh, your mainstream media is going to completely ignore anything. You know, the mainstream media has never shown the film of Building 7 going down. And what we have to do, in my opinion, is people like you and your radio show and people like me continue to get, tell people. Everywhere I go, I tell people to go to the Internet and watch Loose Change because uh, uh, my son turned me on to that. And, of course, when he first told me, I thought, come on, you know, they can put anything on the Internet. And when I, when I finally did watch it, 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 you know, I went through every emotion you could imagine from laughing, crying, getting sick to my stomach stomach to uh, everything, every, the whole emotional thing. And I think the best thing we can do is just to keep communicating, and uh, hopefully the truth will come out eventually if enough pressure is put on and enough people gain knowledge of what's going on in the world. And, uh, and we don't want to lose our country. After all, it's still our country, and until they put us down, we have the power, and, and we have the power to vote these people out of office and get people in there that have the best interests of the country in mind. Governor, I produced the Loose Change Final Cut. It just came out a few months ago. Have you seen that? I need to mail you a, a, a copy of it. Uh, no, I have not, but I'll tell you what, Alex, when I get back to the States, I got your phone number here. I'll give you a call, and you can fire it up to me. Absolutely. I can send and, it to and I will be back in May, so it isn't that far off. Fantastic. Uh, now, I gave you a copy of Terror Storm. Did you have a chance to watch that? Uh, review it for me quick. Remember when we met here in Texas, I gave you a cut. Sure. It's just the history of government-sponsored terrorism. Okay, okay. I vaguely remember it, yeah. I've been reading so much and all that uh, that, uh, yeah, definitely now I do. You told me that you read 16 books uh, in the interim researching this and other subjects. What are other questions you have about the official story? Well, uh, the other questions I have, again, are why was there no wreckage outside of the Pentagon? when the Pentagon was supposedly hit by this other plane. And, I, in fact, when I was watching Loose Change with a friend of mine, he happens to work for a company that helps to build the Boeing airplanes. And when they said that the engines completely disappeared and were destroyed, his response, excuse my French, was bullshit. <laughs> and, I, and I turned to him and said, why? He said, because they're made out of titanium steel. They, could, they can't disintegrate. Well, they said that the whole plane disintegrated. Right. But the engines would never because they're titanium steel. Whoa. I, I wonder why they're still keeping all the cameras secret, too. 
I don't know. Well, but obviously why, Alex? They don't want any of us paying attention anymore. They, you know, remember something. Most people in the United States have a attention span of about, what, 30 minutes? Yes. And then, and then they're on, and they don't pay attention after that. And, uh, and the problem is, and, and I encourage people all the time, stop watching TV and start that old thing called reading. You know, start reading again, because it's the dumbing down of America that's happening right now. Case in point, last year, every major news station in America for 30 days covered the death lead story of Ann and Nicole Smith. They did. And I mean, I sat and got so angry because I thought... Who, oh, how does this woman warrant all of this? It's a distraction. She we have. A, she was a Playboy playmate and a gold digger. Well, we have troops dying in Iraq. We have the economy going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, we have all this corruption. Uh, and, and in the five minutes we've got left with you, Governor, we are going to let you go because I know you're very busy and uh, have a break before your next interview. I would like to get your take on the White House. Why did they think they could sell torture and, and White House memos about torturing children with pliers in front of their parents? Why did they think they could lie about WMDs? Uh, I mean, does that play into the hubris of, of folks that would be involved in 9-11 attack? Well, because always remember this, the, the, the most dastardly person in the world that I know of was Adolf Hitler that I've ever read about. And remember what his most famous quote was, the bigger the lie, the easier the sell. That's it, because people just can't believe it. it, it it's the, the, the audacity. Well, let me put it to you another way. My, my, in, my mom and dad are both gone now. I've been an orphan from 19, since 1995, but my wife's parents are still alive and they're elderly people. And when I try to bring this up with them, they don't want to believe it. And the reason is so simple. They don't believe anyone can be that evil. And I think a great deal of people in this country are of that same thought. They don't believe that people can be that evil. And that's how Hitler was able to do what he did, because people judge the world according to themselves, and if they're nice, sweet people, then they think, and, and, and that's the main reason criminologists say women, you know, get in yellow Volkswagens with Ted Bundy, because they can't believe a nice guy in a nice suit is going to be biting chunks out of them an hour later. Exactly. And, and that's the thing we have to wake up to is that there are bad people, there are evil people, and when we sit back, then, you know, evil prevails if we allow it to happen. So, 44,000 U.S. troops, 18,000 British troops, two aircraft carrier attack groups in the three months before 9-11 massed in the countries and in the waters off of Afghanistan. Newsweek reported Bush, the day before 9-11, signed the attack orders to go into uh, Afghanistan one week later. Isn't that pretty obvious uh, when you have all of these troops being massed and then Bush says, oh, we went in because of 9-11? Uh, I can't answer that, Alex, because that's information I have no knowledge about. I have to just simply take your word for it. Mm -hmm. But if that is true, then absolutely yes. Well, I mean, here's an example. You know about Gulf of Tonkin, because I talked to you a year and a half ago about that. They now admit that right. that was staged. Uh, they yeah. now admit, Chicago Tribune, that Israel did attack the Liberty in 67 to try to blame it on Egypt. Uh, that's now declassified. That that debate's over. I mean, governments, all governments have been caught. Putin's been caught. Uh, uh, doing things like this. Do we need to have a renaissance, and awakening to this so criminal elements in government stop doing it? I mean, how important is it to expose false flag terror? Well, that's why I wrote the book, Alex. It's don't start the revolution without me, and I believe we must have a revolution in which to take our country back. All right. And we're back again. Now, boy, they say it like it is, and some people are a lot more eloquent than I am. And by the way, uh, you know, we're going to have a change here in this show. We're having a schedule change coming up in July. In July, we're going to be the first third and uh, first and third Saturday at 5 p.m. But better than that, we're going to be in our Studio A, which is our large studio. It it will. You know, it has the capacity of seating a, a medium size viewing crowd, so we can have a live TV audience. Um, that's uh, an idea that we had. Now, I mentioned a while ago that we were going to try to get a, um, 
a live telephone interview with Stephen Jones, Professor Stephen Jones, the fellow who did the original discovery of thermite, later thermate, in the debris of, of the World Trade Center and now has discovered unreacted thermite, uh, unreacted thermate in the debris. And uh, we're going to try to get him on the show. Um, but I had an idea that coming up on the 19th of July, I'll, I'll, I haven't talked to Stephen Jones about the date, but maybe that's far enough ahead that we can work it out. Uh, if anybody is out there from the PDX, the Portland PDX 9-11 Truth Group, why don't you uh, get in touch with me? My email will be at the end of the show. And uh, we can hold one of the meetings one a month or two, two a month of your uh, Portland 9-11 group right in Studio A. But I was thinking it would be a good setup to, uh, you know, have a live interview with Stephen Jones and then allow the audience to come up to a microphone and ask Stephen Jones questions while he's still on the telephone. Uh, it might be a really productive show. So get a hold of me if you have any other ideas or would like to participate in something like that. But starting in July, well, July 5th, we have a show where I'll uh, play a tape. Uh, the studio's actually closed on July 5th, but it'll be 5 o'clock, Channel 11, on the first Saturday, July 5th. And uh, at that point, uh, that, that'll be a good one. I'm going to play probably Stephen Jones or maybe Kevin Ryan. I haven't decided yet. But it, the full hour will be a, a, a playing of somebody's, one of these DVDs of my selection, depending on my feeling at the time. I'll try to make it timely. Um, so we got that. And then last week also somebody was asking what book, you know, and I didn't have the book with me, but I do now. Oh, we got the telephone. I'll, I'll stop right what I'm talking about and go right to the caller if you're there, caller. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Well, what well, I've been watching your show, and I'm just kind of curious uh, <clears throat> how you guys can actually believe in the crap that you're trying to feed everybody. <laughs> I mean, this is bananas. Well, here's I can tell you, I mean, seriously, rather than have a battle or anything with you, I can. the idea is that it's now scientifically shown that there was the residue of controlled demolition explosive in the debris. Now you can we you can say well we trust the labs, but how do we know that they actually brought the right you know debris to analyze? How do we know they didn't just spike it and then say look what we found? And the answer is that the same analysis was done by the government. So who are you going to believe? You say you want to believe the government? Well, turn to the end of the FEMA report and you'll see the exact same analysis and the exact same chemical uh, breakdown. The only difference is they don't they don't go to the further step of saying what that analysis means. But here's one quick clue: the, there are pictures of the microspheres, which are little tiny pellets from below a millimeter up to maybe two millimeters uh, of molten iron. Now fires don't get hot enough to to create the liquefied iron that creates those molten spheres. They have to be blasted out in the molten state and stay in space long enough for the surface tension to pull that molten liquid into a, a perfect sphere and then it has to stay in space long enough for it to cool. And there's, they estimate that there are tons and tons of those in the debris. And that alone tells you right there the explanation given by the government of airplanes hitting the towers with the resulting diesel fires or, you know, airplane fuel fires somehow causing the explosive ejection of the vaporized iron is just, you know, right there is your scientific evidence. You know, what well, more do you okay. want? <clears throat> There's also a chemical analysis that a lot of people seem to overlook. You know, your building is not only steel, it's got iron, zinc, it has all kinds of various different chemical components, wires, uh, zinc piping, et cetera, et cetera. And when you've got a tremendous amount of, and we're talking full tank on those planes, uh, sheared open and spread throughout a building full of all kinds of nickel alloy and steel and metal and plastic, and all of that ignites at the same time, you have a chemistry, a re chemical reaction there 
that <clears throat> was clearly visible uh, to anybody watching the attack on uh, the World Trade Center because they burnt uh, for a while before they finally collapsed. And they, you know, one of the, I was watching this one video that a lady put together that was on this same channel here some time back. And one of the biggest things that they said is, well, why is it that uh, the, second, uh, the second building that got hit fell first? Well, the, the clue was staring right at everybody. The second building had more weight on top of it, and that's why it collapsed faster. Then the first building that got hit collapsed second because it was hit closer to the top. And when you've got that much tonnage compressing down, you're going to mushroom a building just like that. It's very clear to see, just like in an earthquake. Well, it seems intuitive, but, you know, you, you take the 15-story top of the building that collapsed through the other 95 floors. Now, the problem is that if you take a look at it, I mean, there's lots that I could get into here. For, I guess the most important thing to say right off the bat is, contrary to the popular story, aviation fuel does not get anywhere near hot enough to harm the steel. Steel is used in those buildings because it's fireproof. It is fireproof. No other building has ever collapsed, even with the most severe fires, much more severe than what we saw in 9-11. Well, okay. Furthermore, so, fire, doesn't, but, fire doesn't make it explode sideways like we saw. No, compression does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. You, it doesn't make and it eject that, at hundreds of meters about... per second. We're talking about explosive ejections. Did you happen to see... Switch to camera one, please. And right here is the DVD of, uh, well, they're not switching, but anyway, there it is. On the right of the screen is the 9-11 Blueprint for Truth. And what that is, that's Richard Gage's presentation. It's a two-hour okay. presentation. Uh, Richard Gage is, is the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. He's a San Francisco architect, member of the American Institute of Architects, AIA. Yeah. And he's uh, given this presentation to architects all over the world and every time he does it they sign on it's past peer review he shows you exactly and i've shown that whole thing on the very first of my series i i split it into two shows and showed that dvd and he goes through all this ex, you know explaining the science and the physics of it but uh the you know even if you believe that airplane fuel can get hot enough to cause that problem NIST was commissioned to study that very situation and they were commissioned to build this is after 9-11 happened they built two floors of the structure and loaded it you know an exact full scale sized uh, construction of some of the floors of the of the tower and okay, they, but, they okay. wound up dump, let me ask you this they couldn't make it fail in short basically let me ask you this yeah. do you have a fireplace in your house sure have you ever okay. seen fire make it disintegrate? Okay, no, no, no. I'm just asking if you have a fireplace in your house. Right on. Okay, you light a fire, what do you have? You have a fire. Right. But after it burns for a while, what you have is hot coals that start forming in the center. But those Same hot coals they... cannot physically be any hotter than the fire ever was at any point. They can right. get as hot as the fire gets, but no hotter. If fire, heat does not accumulate. Now, the, fire, the hydrocarbon fuel that you're talking about cannot get any hotter than 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, and it takes 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit to melt steel. So your physics is but wrong. But it only takes 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit to bend steel. Not Especially that steel. No, no, no. amount of tonnage maybe, on top of it. Maybe some steel that you know of, but not the steel in that building. That steel was certified for six hours at 2,000 degrees by Underwriters Labs. So why did it fail in half an hour? You have to answer that question if you're going to try to push that idea that fire hurt it. How I did fire it's a hurt it? When it's, theory no, this by, we're, we're talking about Underwriters uh, Labs. Oh man, the problem is with people when you tell them why they're wrong and you tell them where they can find the information and why they're wrong and try to explain it to them, their minds close. And we have to figure out a way to explain to this guy that he and I are on the same side. And the people that are sinisterly using 9-11 to cause all these problems are the ones that we are both against. And, you know, I told the guy, fire doesn't get that hot. 
any so he, now he's trying to tell me that 1600 degrees is hot enough to bend steel well okay now the rest of what i have to say is that even the uh, nist report found that the hottest it got was 500 degrees no matter what you expect it to be able to get it only got to 500 degrees no matter what by paint tip analysis so it didn't even get hot enough even if it could next caller go ahead before i get overexcited hello this is marco from northwest portland oh howdy well you know i i think the reality of the situation is that uh you know we're America is headed towards a third world country, and uh, the corporations want to push it in that direction, and nobody really wants to admit that that's what's going on. And part of that may be related to the 9-11 situation, and part of it may be just be that the corporations want to move in that direction. And I don't think that your caller, your previous caller, nor a lot of other Americans, including my fiance, want to admit that, you know, we're headed in that direction. It's unfortunate. That All right. It doesn't... My, my dad used to say that it doesn't have to be a conspiracy if everybody's doing it. Well, yeah, I think, it's, you know, I think the handwriting's on the wall right now, and nobody and wants to admit it. It's, it's it kind of like, upset, but... It's kind of like wink, wink, you know, we're all going to make money on this one, wink, wink. And all they, all they do is just, you know, ignore anything that, you know, would stop the ball from rolling down the money hill. Uh, well, if the, if the money never gets to the people who are creating the money, then it, it, there's no money hill. Well, okay, but what I'm saying is, uh, let let's start over. <laughs> the uh, the like the insurance companies, for instance, they you know couldn't all the insurance companies across the broadband of insurance spectrum weren't involved in 9/11, even if you could possibly prove that any of them were or one right. of them, but. Every one of them went along with the idea of not questioning the official story of 9-11. I mean, not right. even when, when all the conspiracy theories were out there, you know, that should be enough for, you know, the insurance company to say, wait a minute, it could be fraud, insurance fraud. And, you know, if you hurt your neck or, or pretend to or whatever, you make a claim for a, a hurt neck, they're going to send guys with cameras around to try to catch you playing basketball with your nephew. You know, and that, that's for a twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollar claim. Here we're talking about a four billion dollar payout, and it, Lloyd's of London didn't even squawk except for the amount. They didn't, but they didn't squawk on the liability. They didn't even mention anything about an investigation. And you know, why is that? Because they got to raise their rates broad, broad sky. We talked about this last show, two thousand um, percent. And everybody went along with that. They all raised their rates. They said, oh, my God, these buildings are more dangerous than we ever dreamed. <laughs> so we better charge more. And as long as the public is officially buying the official story, then, yeah, exactly. that could, it must be right. Oh. As long as America agrees that there's a problem, we will continue to go on the same road. And America will continue to be in the pits as a result. Right on. Um. By the way, uh, what do you think about the idea of having a live studio audience for the show? Well, I love it. It's great, man. I watch the channel all the time. Well, uh, yeah, but when you come down to the studio, is I mean, is, or am I just... <laughs> I didn't know you guys had a studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, okay, thanks. <laughs> this is uh, Portland Community Media. How many, how many chairs are there in the studio? <laughs> we'll set up one for you. All right, thanks. Okay, right, we got one. You. No problem. We got another caller here, so call back again sometime. Where's the other caller? Is there another caller? Hey, how's it going? Hello. Uh, you know, first of all, that guy that hung up on you, you know, you're going to get that kind of thing, these guys. And you were right. Just as soon as you start laying out the evidence with them, they, uh, they, they, they turn around and walk away. It's, you're going to get that kind of thing. Um <clears throat> But uh, it's just real interesting how we can look at how many times this administration has failed from the very beginning of this whole thing, you know, even up to the war that we're in now and all the failures. Well, did you hear, how about Kucinich on Monday? Did you hear any of that? 
Well, he looks like he's going to open up uh, articles of impeachment. Well, he already did. On Monday, he read 35 articles of impeachment into the congressional record. It took him almost five hours. Yeah. And every one of them was a different one, a different crime, uh, you know, that the Bush administration has committed. And, you know, I doubt that we, you know, that the general public is even aware of a little bit of it. So, you know, what we might do, what time is it? Oh, okay. Well, we have a little bit of time left, 20 minutes. Maybe we can roll in a Kucinich clip, but in the meantime, uh, what were you about to say? <laughs> well, it's just, you know, real interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, just this entire fiasco uh, from 9-11, all the fumbles and failures within the war. I mean, it's just really hard to look at this administration and just say, oops, looks like 9-11 <laughs> just sort of happened right on our watch. Well, people kind of think it's going to be like the Kennedy administration, I mean, the Kennedy assassination, where we never find out what's going on until 40 years later, and now E. Howard Hunt has... Uh, on his deathbed admitted to being part of the assassination team but you haven't heard that go out have you you nope. know it's like it, nobody cares now and besides which it would point to the same people who are in power now yeah well it's just ridiculous anyway go on with your show and have a nice day <laughs> thank you um, right, any other calls no i guess not um well why don't we go ahead and roll in that first kucinich clip if you can find it uh it, it'll be number one on the second page and uh, we'll just play one clip. It's, I have two clips that add up to about 15 minutes, but we'll play one clip and just hear how it sounds. The gentleman from Ohio. Wait, hold on. I'm going to go for it. Recognized. Madam Speaker, pursuant to Clause 2 of Rule 9, I rise to give notice of my intent to raise a question of the privileges of the House. The form of the resolution is as follows. The House is not in order. Please proceed. The form of the resolution is as follows. A resolution, articles of impeachment of George Bush, President of the United States, resolved that President George W. Bush be impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors and that the following articles of impeachment be exhibited to the United States Senate. Articles of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and of the people of the United States of America in maintenance and support of its impeachment against President George W. Bush for high crimes and misdemeanors. In his conduct while President of the United States, George W. Bush, in violation of his constitutional oath to faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and to the best of his ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, and in violation of his constitutional duty, to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, has committed the following abuses of, po of power. Article 1, creating a secret propaganda campaign to manufacture a false case for war against Iraq. In his conduct while President of the United States, George W. Bush, in violation of his constitutional oath to faithfully execute the office of President of the United States, and to the best of his ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, and in violation of its constitutional duty under Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution, to take care that the laws be faithfully executed, has both personally and acting through his agents and subordinates, together with the Vice President, illegally spent public dollars on a secret propaganda campaign to manufacture a false cause for war against Iraq. The Department of Defense has engaged in a years-long secret domestic propaganda campaign to promote the... In the gentleman will suspend. The House will come to order. Please proceed. The Department of Defense has engaged in a years-long secret domestic propaganda campaign to promote the invasion and the occupation of Iraq. 
the secret program was defended by the white house press secretary following its exposure this program follows the pattern of crimes detailed in articles one two four and seven strike that eight the mission of this program place it within the field controlled by the white house iraq group known as wig a white house task force formed in august two thousand and two to market an invasion of iraq to the american people the group included Karl Rove, I. Lewis Libby, Condoleezza Rice, Karen Hughes, Mary Matlin, Stephen Hadley, Nicholas E. Callio, and James R. Wilkinson. The White House Iraq Group, or WIG, produced white papers detailing so-called intelligence of Iraq's nuclear threat that later proved to be false. This supposed intelligence included the claim that Iraq had sought uranium from Ni Niger as well as the claim that the high-strength uranium tubes Iraq purchased from China were to be used for the sole purpose of building, of building centrifuges to enrich uranium. Unlike the National Intelligence Estimate of 2002, the Whigs white paper provided, quote, gripping images and stories, unquote, and used, quote, literary license, unquote, with intelligence. The White House Iraq Group's white papers were written at the same time and by the same people as speeches and talking points prepared for President Bush and some of his top officials. All right. I was, I was taking a look at the other, at the other stuff that we could play, but... Um, Talking about propaganda campaign to start a, a, wall, a war that had no cause, no no just cause. The, you know, propaganda, that's just one of 35 indictments against the Bush administration. Um, I wanted to get back to that caller that was t talking about the fire being able to hurt the thing. And take a look here at at the smoke that you see right up here the big black thick dark dense smoke if you've ever been camping or the guy asked me if I had a fireplace if anybody else has ever had a fireplace uh, what does it mean when you see black smoke pouring off of it it means you better get some oxygen to it because it's gonna go out or it doesn't have any heat uh, so you know that a fire burns clean when it's hottest and that smoke would be not black like that well go ahead caller we got a caller hello hi um could you first go over uh your dvds these i'm going to get are for helping with researching and i wanted to see if there was some names of any dvds that i had not watched okay well s starting right here uh, you can see oh <laughs> my mic is so loud when i do that Oh, hey, you guys switched to the wrong camera there. <laughs> That's a good one there. <clears throat> but it, this one here is Richard Gage's, you can even see it on camera one, R Richard Gage's 9-11 Blueprint for Truth. And that's the one that we divided into two for the first couple shows of this series. Um, the one next to it, the one in the middle there, is Alex Jones' Terror Storm, a good one to get. I also recommend, um, well, of course, he, we talked about Loose Change also, and that was... Oops, wrong one. This one at the at the end here, Loose Change. It's come out with a new one, Loose Change uh, Final Cut. This is Loose Change Second Edition, um, which, by the way, is what uh, Jesse Ventura said convinced him. <clears throat> now, um, take a look at the... Uh, uh, looks like we've got a green screen behind me now, but take All a look right. at the other... I'm trying to go back to camera two. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they had it for a minute, but that's okay. The The deal is, uh, let me point here. Okay, this one right here is uh, Stephen, I mean, uh, David Ray Griffin, 9-11, The Myth and the Reality. And that's a really good one. Stephen Ray Griffin wrote The uh, New Pearl Harbor. And that's a book that, that's a must-have. Stephen Ray Griffin also wrote... The 9-11 Commission Report, Omissions and Distortions. Um, so those are, that's a really good source of information. And one of the best, most entertaining ones is done by Barry Zwicker. He's a Canadian journalist, 
and uh, he did a, one called uh, The Great Conspiracy, the 9-11 news story you never saw. And uh, I mentioned this earlier, this one's Alex Jones and Marshall, or 9-11 Martial Law. I didn't, I guess I didn't mention it, but because there's 9-11, The Road to Tyranny is the one. Yeah, this one right here, 9-11 Road to Tyranny. That's the one that starts out about 9-11. And oh, I can hardly wait to uh, <laughs> for, for my income to improve so I can get Alex Jones' next uh, DVD. He's got the, uh, oh, like, well, it's the latest s summation of the 9-11 stories. Uh, oh. I think it's going to be a good one. Right, right, right. I, I can't remember the name of it either. Yeah, but anyway, go to Alex Jones' website. Uh, this is the one, Im Improbable Collapse. Uh, that's, that's a compilation, kind of, of a whole bunch of people that we already know. Stephen Jones, uh, David Ray Griffin, Kevin Ryan, Jim Hoffman, a bunch of others. Um, but that's just kind of stuff that these other guys really did. This 9-11 in plain sight here, uh, done by the, the Power Hour, is a radio show. Uh, Klein, is that his name? I forgot the guy's name now. But anyway, 9-11 uh, in plain sight has some errors in it that, you know, some things they pointed out that were supposed to be anomalies um, that would raise your eyebrows or that should be answered. And some of them have been answered, you know, but a lot of people have tried to discredit that whole 9-11 in plain sight because some of the things that they questioned have been answered already. Um, you know, the... The, all the DVDs don't get automatically updated, <laughs> so that's just at you're, that you're point in history. Anything, you'll make a mistake occasionally. But. Well, yeah, I mean, you can count on all of us having some part of it wrong, or maybe even a major part of it wrong. But the one thing that we don't have wrong is that the government story doesn't fit. Correct. And and, if, and what if fills you, the void? We we're working on that, and we may be right, we may be wrong. But that's why we need an investigation with teeth, with subpoena power, with money. And with an internationally acclaimed group of people, some, something that nobody will say, well, huh, he works on the board of directors of this, and they're, you know, conflict of interest. So, you know, got any thoughts on how to get out of that? I don't know. No, but I would like to make sure we inform people to just at least look at the evidence, because the evidence is overwhelming. To yeah, to say, the, to say the least. Oh, by the way, somebody asked, you know, if you're really into the evidence or really want to know the nitty-gritty, um, Michael Rupert, the policeman who busted the CIA on the cocaine running in the late 70s. Right. Uh, anyway, he wrote the book Crossing the Rubicon, and this book is, well, he unmodestly or whatever with confidence says that you know, this this is written in a way that a prosecutor could use to prosecute the case. It's got the, the evidence presented in that type of fashion, like a L.A. cop would prepare to prosecute a drug case. And so it's really good. It's good reading, but it's you know it's tedious and long. Not well. It depends on how you look at it. You know, I I couldn't put it down once I started, but it's it's a hard book to read. Now, one of the um I've, I've seen many, many DVDs, or at least off the internet, uh, and 9-11 Mysteries was another good one. Oh, yeah. One. Yeah, that's what I got right here, 9-11 Mysteries, and I didn't quite get to that. Um, and that is a good one. And this one on the end that was the last one I have displayed here, uh, this is a kind of a two-for-one special. It's got two sub-documentaries, each one a 98-minute, or each one an hour long, I guess. That I might be showing one of these uh, on July 5th. In fact, I probably will. I, it's One of them is Stephen Jones, uh, who we, we want to do the interview with in July, I hope. And I hope so, too. That, that's on this side. And then if you flip it over, it's Kevin Ryan. Ah, and okay. Kevin Ryan, we haven't really heard very much from. We've heard about him and, and a few cuts here and there. But this is an hour. And it would be nice to hear it. It's, it says, Kevin Ryan, former lab manager and scientist at Underwriter Labs, the company that tested the steel used in the World Trade Center buildings was fired by UL when he went public with information about the cover-up. And how many times have people called up and said, why don't people go public about the cover-up? Well, you lose your job. Well, he went public and lo got lost his job. 
and they don't even they aren't even aware that he went public and if they are aware then he's some kind of conspiracy nut but this is a guy that was in the middle of it and he explains in detail why the National Institute of Standards and Technology NIST uh, why the report on the World Trade Center collapses is false anyway that's a good one to get too if you can find it you can find it on the Stephen Jones website for sure um, and Anyway, we got one more call. I'm going to try to squeeze it in. We got well, we got seven more minutes, I guess. Anything else to say before we go? Oh, we're gone. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, caller. Hello. Yes. You have. Yes. Thank you very much, Indes, for taking my call. Great shows you have. And, thank uh, you. My my question is, where can we? Is there any website we can go watch all these movies or? Is, I mean, how we can have access to that? Uh, because some of us, due to unemployment, oh, it, we you, can we are unable to purchase the videos. Right. Well, Google has a lot of this stuff, um, and you know, so you go to video.google.com and type in "loose change," and you can watch the entire uh, second edition "loose change." I'm sure and. Uh, Terror Storm is out there. Yes. Uh, um, at the end of the show, I'm going to show the credits for both the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. That's AE911truth.org. And the other one is Stephen Jones' website, the one that's Scholars, uh, Scholars for Truth and Justice.org. STJ911.org. It's at the end of, in the credit roll. And uh, yes, both of those. I, are I have seen most of the movies, but 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 you have a lot more. I mean, what uh, can you maybe give us more title of it, or because it's, we cannot see all the titles. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I, and I've had my email up on the end here. It says, uh, you know, if you have questions or comments, send me an email. But if you send me an email and ask me for the reading list, I'll send you a list of DVDs with you know who they are and what the titles are and maybe a brief description. I've been meaning to type, sit down and type that up anyway, and that'll just force me to do it. So it's at the end of 251 Omega at Comcast.net. And, and, and the last thing I need to say, 911 was inside job. Absolutely true. And and I don't know what, what country are you from? Did you hang up already? Uh, I'm, I'm from Beirut. Okay, well, yeah, and, and America is running an operation against them right now. Yes. Um, and I just wanted to say, because you sounded, you know, Middle East, that, you know, the the most that any Arab or Middle Easterner had to do with 9-11 was strictly as a patsy working for the CIA. But they didn't cause it. And anybody that thinks they did... I, it, actually, they were Saudi. I mean, they should... It's Saudi, Saudi, if anything. Bomb, that, Sa Saudi. They absolutely. Saudi. No, not Iraq, not Iran. Even not, uh, the... Pakistan. The list of you're right. The list of people that the FBI gave, whether it's true or not, listed you know 15 out of 19 of them were Saudis. So we go after Afghanistan? What is this? Yeah, it's That's stupid. Bullshit. You know. Anyway, thank you for calling. I like to have your input. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Bye -bye. you. Anyway, that was great. You know, and uh, I want to reiterate that the Arabs, you know, the story about Arabs actually causing 9/11. You know, there may be people in the hierarchy, the elite moneyed Arabs that want to, you know, that are going to profit from this. And they might have even been part of the roundtable discussion how to do it. But the, the, the people that actually did it, there, there was no access to those buildings to put controlled demolition explosives in all three of the buildings that collapsed uh, due to explosives on 9-11. They didn't have any access. They were completely occupied by security, you know, the Security Exchange Commission, the Department of Defense, the CIA, the FBI, and numerous other ones that, you know, alphabet soup. The point is, nobody from Al Qaeda could have access. So, God, I hate it when they start talking about Al Qaeda, which was a CIA creation in the first place. We're back to the CIA again. Yeah, anyway. Uh, any more callers, or do I get to keep ranting? <laughs> oh, we have one call. Okay, go ahead, call. How's it going, Bill? Fine. Um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say I, I tuned in late. Uh huh. 
so I didn't get to hear um, the other caller, just heard the last caller. Um, I just want to say that, um, have you seen have you seen Zeitgeist? Oh yeah, it, you know you're about the third show in a row where somebody from, called up. From to, very start to very end. Yeah, you bet. What, what do you think of that? Um, is right it, on. Is I, it right I, on? I think so too. I recommend everybody watch it. Okay, and you know what else I wanted to uh, say to the viewers and yourself? If you, have you seen uh, Alex Jones Endgame the movie? Oh yeah, it's okay. two hours and fourteen minutes mm -hmm. long. I'm putting it on uh, in three parts. And it's going to show on uh, Monday, June 23rd, which is next week, on channel 22 at 6 p.m. And that'll be, uh, I'll say it again, June 23rd, channel 22, 6 p.m., Alex Jones, Endgame, the movie, part one. I'm going to do it in three parts. Do you know when the other two parts are showing? What was that? Do you know when the other two parts are showing? Or are you just going to show it? I'm going to show it number one, and then i got to use my D9 over. Oh, right on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I only have one D9, and with everything going up through the ceiling. Obviously, know. this fellow that's calling is another Portland Community Media producer. And, you know, folks out there, if you'd like to get involved in making TV shows and putting out your opinion. Yes, absolutely. Come on down. You know, sign on up. Be a producer. I was a nobody before I became a tv star <laughs> anyway great show bill keep up the good work man okay thank and, you and, and for the folks out there again if you've missed it it's uh june 23rd channel 22 6 p.m i'll probably be Alex watching Jones. myself yeah end game the movie yeah yeah anyway. but i'd like to get a copy of his latest release about 9 11 well anyway i don't know if you the caller's not there anymore but Alex Jones did a new release on that's just coming out now. I don't know if it's in the theaters or how he's doing it. You can't get it on Google yet. Uh, you can get it on his website, though, if you're a subscribing member, um, something like 50 or $60 a year. But it gives you full access to all of his movies in high quality. So that might answer that other fellow's uh, question, too, if you want to subscribe to Alex Jones' website and get early notices of news events and like that uh, that's a good way to do it mine just expired and uh, you know money notwithstanding I'll go ahead and try to re-up as soon as I can we're going out now and there's the uh, architects for 9-11 truth and the Steve Jones website in, in correction of what I said last week and I guess I'll see you again well July 5th is the next one I th or no the 20 the 28th of June 28th of June 28th of June is the next one